<laughs> uh, welcome everybody. This is um, hold on. I'm looking for my. This is the <laughs> outreach subcommittee meeting of the Nohanto Policy Review Commission. Today is March 15, 2021. This meeting is going to start. This is starting at 6:08. Um, as far as we know, this is going to be the last outreach subcommittee meeting because this week uh, the full report is due. Um, we're gonna open the meeting. Noah, can you count us? Yes, Javier. Here. Dan. Here. And Carol. Here. Great, thank you. Excellent. Do we have any minutes to approve? No, we are, we are fine. Excellent. Um, let me see. My comp uh, I, uh, in advance, I want to say I'm really sorry. Uh, my computer has been misbehaving, has rebooted twice during mm. pretty important meetings. Uh, and I want to remind everybody that this meeting is being recorded on Zoom. Um, and we're gonna move to um, public hearing. If you want to speak feel free to raise your hand on the reaction section. You're gonna see uh, the raise hand feature. Um, if you're from a phone, you, I always forget this, uh, asterisk six and asterisk nine are the two options. One is to unmute yourself and the other is to raise your hand. Um, they are 15 minutes allocated for public comments three minutes per person. So we can wait a little bit if there's anybody who would like to use um, public speaking time. Okay, we're gonna move forward to the next uh, item in our agenda, which is to workshop the testimonies collected. And workshop, workshop is a sort of a overstatement. So, so far we, I was able to, with the help of Noah, to collect the transcripts uh, from a, to two of the public hearings. There was no transcript from the second one. Is that correct, Noah? Yeah, one of them didn't, one of them didn't record um, and one of them we didn't have the transcript on yet. Yeah, so the first one not was able to take really good notes. So we have that. The third one, uh, we had the full transcript that Zoom did, which is yeah. incredibly decent. I mean, I I was incredibly surprised. Um, also, we have all the um, testimonies that were collected through the the link that, that, that the city uh, posted on their uh, website plus uh, all the testimonies and the analysis that Sean Donovan from the Wildflower Alliance put together. All that material was sent to all the members of this subcommittee. Uh, I wanna say thanks to Dan. I was having trouble accessing the, the online form. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, by the way. <laughs> so I, I wanna open the floor. Um, so when I was talking about workshopping this, I was talking about because the reality is that I, I want to get the input from the professional input from Carol and Dan about this. And at the end of the day, all this collection of testimonies, it's, you know, it's going to be in, uh, delivered to Dan and Cynthia to plug into the, the, the draft they already have of the for a final report. So I want to open the floor, uh, Carol, Dan. Carol, you're muted. Yeah, I've been looking in the last couple of days, I've been reading the testimonies and there's so much there. I think that uh, one of the things that I wanna suggest is that we not take whole blocks of testimony and insert them, but just uh, basically sort them tonight by th obvious themes that come out of the testimony. Uh, there are some rather consistent themes 
uh, relating to over a period of, of hearings that relate to uh, advocacy for not only alternative responses to certain community crises uh, around mental health, substance issues, housing, but also a real strong current for um, peer involvement of peer peers, people with lived experience in in the response. Um, there were also uh, a fair number, this surprised me, there were a fair number of um, comments about the importance of creating a new department. And, uh, you know, like a department of um, uh, community care, community safety. And, and I think that's because there were so many people and some of them I think are here tonight from the public who really have followed this entire journey since since September have been present for these meetings, you know, and very diligently um, observing and listening and thinking. And so I think early on, some at some point when this commission was beginning to coalesce around the idea of having another city department um, that would coordinate a lot of um, a lot of services that that uh, address social need in one one sort or another. That I think members of the public and signed on in the public comment period and and made comments about how how they liked that idea. So I mean I'm seeing that I'm also seeing comments from people who testified to the in their mind the usefulness of the NPD to their lives. And so I think we will need to just do some sorting by um, the type of call uh, that police are doing and, and see what the, what the commentary is on, on different kinds of dispatch. Because I mean, I think that's how it break that, breaks down. People have opinions about where police, armed police should be dispatched and where they sh should not, where, where we should pursue an alternative. So that's, that's kind of what I'm seeing. And I, by no means did I get through every testimony but um, you know, maybe we can work on that tonight. Yeah, I, and and this is and, and you raise a really fair point. There were certainly a massive amount, and sometimes people would send more than one, right? Mm -hmm. And there were people who give testimony, but also they send an extremely um, well developed and concise testimony to our emails, mm -hmm. right? That they would send it to them, and I would send it to us. So in some in some instances. I have taken a look to those, and I have kept the 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 one containing the the, the same ideas, the most amount of ideas, so that we don't have to the, the repeat. And that happened with with a fair amount of people that were you know either uh, on favor of uh, of creating a department. I mean, we have people who testify ten times about that. And right. I don't, I don't, right. I don't feel if I have the same person testifying ten times, I have, I, I'm not gonna add it ten times. But certainly, some, I'm gonna look for most of those people. They wrote emails to us mm -hmm. that that certainly in, encapsulate really well uh, their 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 point. Then, um, do you have any thoughts? I mean, at the end of the day, whatever we do, whatever we qualify, wherever we create a subject, a, a theme, it's in service of what you and Cynthia are finishing. So uh, having that in mind, uh, what, uh, what, what are your thoughts? So, yeah, I mean, I think I mean, you all have the, the document and, you know, people have been sending updates. So there's more to merge in. And I know that, or, sorry, but just that the policies and services um, subcommittee where they also have things to add or edit and change. <laughs> so I'll be trying to get that out tonight. <laughs> Um, but what I think would be useful, um, I mean, just looking at the recommendations that we have, and if there's, if there are comments that you read that sort of exemplify either the call that people are making or the, the experiences that we're referencing, or if they, um, strong feelings about some of the alternatives, um, Anything there where we could add in, um, you know, I know we have a we have a section about restorative justice programs outside of uh, police, right? And so, mm -hmm. I know we had testimony on like what restorative justice means. I 
tried to insert some, so there's someone talking about, um, you know, their experience as a, as a peacekeeper at a protest. And so put that in with the large nonviolent public assembly or protests, right? So like there's, there's somebody saying, hey, there's a community group that does this and we were part of it. Um, and what did escalate it was the state police um, mm -hmm. uh, coming so, in. So you're already oh. taking a look to all the, well, obviously you're already taking a look to all the, the, the information that I, that I sent, right? Yep. So I started, but like, I mean, really, if you could point me towards <laughs> what stands out and it doesn't have to be one, like a quote for each thing. I think that's too much. Yeah. Um, oh, right. Right. I mean, exactly. And the reality at the end of the day, uh, I mean, only in in um, only in the last public hearing, we have 16 pages of comments. So <laughs> Yeah. Um, we have a massive amount of comments, and 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 I think that's that's that, that's that's good. But at the same time, we're going to be really concise and 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 paying attention to every comment that is going to be used. Be uh, thoughtful to keep the essence of the comment right. Mm -hmm. It's it's that's extremely important. Uh, cool. In which way do you see this best better to go? Do you want to? Do you do you think we should? Um, what what we can do? We can open. Is the uh, uh, would uh, would we be able to open the preliminary report and look it up on a chair screen, or not? That's not yet to be done, or we have to wait for tomorrow. Then no, you could. Um, so you should have got it in the. Um, or you know, I can just. I'll send the, another one. Give me a second here. No, we I we got it at ten oh nine today, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yep, that yeah. was after the last round of uh, emails. Yeah, I have I have sort of a question or a comment. What I've been doing with the testimonies is, you know, it, it's pretty clear that in all the recorded meetings we've had, whether commissioners are talking or whether members of the public are talking, that the, the mechanism that records all that and does the um, closed captioning that it, you know, it picks up on whatever it thinks is the, the pronunciation and the accent. And there are many errors in there, you know, because the technology is only as good as it is. So what I've done is I've um, copied and pasted these segments that, I'm, that we're going to consider uh, to submit to you, Dan and Cynthia, you know, and I'm putting the, the first name of who had testified, I'm putting parenthesis, you know, when they testify, like third public hearing, and then a little note saying, uh, insert in, if you're going to use it at all, insert in housing needs or insert in alternative uh, mental health. And what I've done is, quote, clean the data. This is something you do in qualitative studies where you're taking, you know, you, you're interviewing people, let's say, and, you know, that the pronunciation, I mean, in this case, it was recorded and we're looking at the recording, we're looking at the transcript of the recordings where the words are, are clearly wrong. And so I've quote, cleaned the data, meaning I've quote, corrected. I'm not changing the meaning or the sentence structure of because the voice of the person is there, but I'm really cleaning up the, uh, uh, the words that look like they're wrong and it was supposed to be something mm -hmm. else. Yep. So, Carol, yeah. would you be able to share your screen yeah, I can do that. Let me let me pull something up here. Uh, no, can you make um, Carol co-host? Thank you. So I just emailed okay. both the um, the latest drafts, um, so you have it. The, like I said, there's nothing that's major changed um, from it, and there's been, um, some language changes that I'm sure that I'll get in a minute. But um, really, I think what what I would say would be good is if you even if it's not perfect if you know that there's a, a quote that that resonates that um, is really powerful that includes language that we want um, rather than like fixing all of them I would say yeah. if you could point out what that that language or point out the ones that you think like this is really powerful mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. now one of the things I thought we would do tonight you see I have you can see on the screen I've got these major chunks of testimony yeah. that relate to these, uh, blue, you know, topics in blue or themes in blue. Now these all seem too long. I thought 
that if it was just Javier and me tonight, we would just like cut them down and, and take the essence out of it. But yep. these are all the direct quotes, the best to the best of my ability. Um, some of them are powerful, like uh, the, the folks who are going, there's more than one. <clears throat> On the way to Cooley Dickinson to be seen by the crisis team, get picked up by the police. Here's one forced out of my car, had to abandon on the side of the road and forced to take an ambulance to the hospital and then was later billed a thousand dollars for, um, you know, wellness checks, somebody talking about wellness checks gone bad. And even to the point that she goes on to say, crisis team usually won't even call the police anymore for wellness checks, especially for me because they know of my traumas with the police. So, um, yeah, so I did what I could in the last day or two. But I mean, Dan, does this look like stuff we could submit to you or do we need to be more concise? Um, I mean, if if you have the fortitude to, to <laughs> chunk that out and identify what mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what it is what yeah. it is that that you think would be good that would be wonderful um mm -hmm. so for example let's let's take this one that you have over there which is the one that um dan was referring right yeah i mean uh, certainly certainly we can um so this specific person was the one who was being peace, peacekeeper mm -hmm. when was the first uh blm protest in, in right the region. Right, with an estimate of forty five hundred attendees. So then, and, rather yeah. rather than than cutting anything, what about if we just highlight sort of the 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 important parts of the test of this specific mm -hmm. testimony? Right, right, right. Is it, it would that be useful, Dan? Sorry, I'm sort of juggling multiple things. Can you say that again? Oh, okay. <laughs> Javier, are you you're saying yes. extract uh, extract the essence of this the peacekeeper? Yes. So the rather peace... ra rather than than because I this is it, this is my fault because in my head I was thinking okay so we're gonna have to sort of look at way to sort of chew it in chew it in it and make it more mm -hmm. specific right. But right. would it be useful for you then if we highlight? Uh, so for example, in this testimony, I would highlight in yellow with only a couple of those and fellows peacekeepers. We have no police intervention. We had no reported violence within the five hour period. Yeah, and I actually grabbed that and I, I did the oh, same okay. sort of thing where it was so I grabbed that one for the large protest and I basically just, you know, where there was extraneous information or where things were repetitive, you just dot 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 continue the quote. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. But but that's the thing. I would it I I I don't want to cut it. I just want to highlight those sections. So you just, your yep. attention would go just to the highlighted parts and yep. the, the, the clear blue color with, with it, with a theme, yep. right? Would that perfect. be enough for you? Yep. That's okay. perfect. Okay. Let's, uh, uh, Carol, do you want to start from the beginning of the, the page? Yes. Um, there's one, uh, testimony that speaks to houselessness and housing needs. Can everybody read this? Yes. Okay. okay. You know, it really talks about, it speaks to attitude of police towards home, at least these police who were engaged in conversation with the um, person who gave the testimony, or I mean, engaged with citizens about what a drag it is to have homeless people right downtown near City Hall. <clears throat> They're all down here and we can't do anything about it. So it was just kind of distressing to me that the police, yeah, this is the testimony, distressing to me that the police would have a will to go in and remove people who are just trying to survive when they can't, for whatever reason, get access to affordable housing and shelter. I'd like to see a focus on housing first approaches to addressing the housing issue. I'd like to see the decriminalization of survival and housing in our streets okay um you know i mean we can highlight from a couple of their hand police departments until, okay um and this is just an idea i mean I, if carol you feel uh, uh against it all the way to you know um housing and shelter i, th I feel that that's certainly one idea and after that you have the idea 
mm-hmm. that the, the the city should focus on housing first, right? So that right. you have the main the main point of the statement, and after that you have this sort of um, final closing statement, which is in relation to housing. Yeah. Right? You know, a lot of people naturally, I mean, it's sort of a natural, wait a minute. And I can't multitask. A couple, okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, wait a minute, what happened? Yeah, go uh, go back, uh, undo, Carol. I think, uh, I think. Undo, things, where's yeah. undo? Where's undo, I'm sorry. Uh, up, upper left corner. The no upper uh, above home go up. You have the oh like the, this. There you are. More, more. Again. Yes. More. More. There you are. Okay. Ah uh, no, one more. One more. There you are. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, all things shifted. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yellow is bad. Okay, we'll use green. Yep. And then I'll use another green. So we can use green for main state, main point, and we can use you know blue for secondary point. Mm-hmm. Is that okay then? Um. Yeah, I mean, I think. Um. <clears throat> so I think you both have a little bit more knowledge about what's in this so i think i would trust you to sort of i would say if you could highlight the ones that you think are the most impactful and say this is this is the theme of that um and i would probably prefer like a like just like the text like 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 text underneath the quote or above the quote so that i can just search you know if i list and then i can find sort of a new a new document no, I mean, just like, like, um, so we're, uh, so it's, it's sort of there where you have, uh, so like David's place near reference to houselessness and housing needs. Um, so I think as long as it, you know, as long as you keep using houselessness or housing needs and just write that next to the name and then just say what, um, I would just, just tag the ones that you think are the most important and then I will. Uh, I'll go to those, and when I work with Cynthia, we'll be able to sort of pick okay. them, pick them apart. Oh, all right. So we may. I guess what I'm hearing is that when Javier and I go through all this, and maybe copy and paste onto this document a few more of these, that uh, we should just then make a decision to cut out it to not use some. Yet yeah, we wouldn't erase them. We'll just put a little flag next to it saying, you know, we really, we really want to highlight this one. Because it seems more powerful than the others, does that make sense? Yes, that that is that would be perfect. Okay. Cool. Okay, so Carol, let's go through this one. After that, I, I, I can create a new document with the to add the other ones from the other okay. sources. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So this one. Was Steve here? Steve. Yeah. Um, uh, Steve. So he speaks in favor of a community responder model. <clears throat> yeah, I, I would say I particularly want to speak in favor of a community responder model, which has been used in some communities where people who are more uh, more social workers and armed police officers respond to many of the calls 911. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you want to highlight that that section, and we can just come back? Uh, we just highlight whatever we feel is sort of the main point, and we come back and we clean it, mm-hmm. and we decide. Um, I could do this whole thing here, really. Yeah. <sighs> this is a very long narrative, a long story. Yeah, and I think it's more than one, right? Yeah. And this is this is where we got help from um, 
Wildflower Alliance that did their own, basically yeah. their own interviewing or survey. Yes. So it's yeah. multiple, multiple anecdotes, really. This is pretty striking. Yep. I Someone agree. else responded that the police once locked me up when I was in a pretty extreme state. Um, and I, I want to point out that in um, the time that I've spent over the years with people who are expatient ad advocates, people with lived experience of mental illness who have been labeled, you know, um, the, the terminology is extreme state, meaning, you know, normal thinking, normal behavior, except when there's this episode of, you know, the, the symptoms flare up and it's, ex you know, it's, it's a pretty extreme state. So, you know, that's, that's important language to have in there. The police once locked me up when it's so dysregulated or whatever you want to say about it. And then put me, sent me before a judge in shackles and an orange jumpsuit. So basically they arrested this person, right? Yep. The one person who responded to my needs was the bailiff in the court who must have realized I wasn't in the best space. She asked my name and had the judge call me next so I could get out of there. When someone, and here's a very important point, when someone is feeling overwhelmingly anxious and confined, you know, so you got shackles on mm -hmm. this person, already is already in the worst possible thing. Uh, the worst possible thing to do is to put us in a cell, quote, for our own good. Yeah, I think I, that's I think that's pretty powerful. I agree with you. So yeah. I'm gonna right now I'm gonna highlight the whole thing and then we'll see what we do with it. So one of the people that um the Waterfellow Alliance talked to, Sean Donovan talked to, and one of the few, I would say the only one, who was willing to come forward with a testimony was Jalen. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you read it, um, it's really familiar. We have heard what happened uh, with Jalen before. On um, the well, on the wellness check, on a wellness check. Yeah. Yeah. Jalen uh, does acknowledge in the longer version of the testimony that there have been multiple, it, partly because of, you can see the diagnoses here. Yep. woman who states she has PTSD and non-epileptic seizures and traumatic brain injury shares that on one of the one of the wellness checks by the NPD when she had gone unconscious. So I can assume that somebody else pretty must have called on her behalf. Yeah. She regained they were there, several police officers. She regained consciousness and said she wanted to stay at home. She heard an officer say, I don't give a fuck about officer Kerouac's mental training. So that's a reference to some training that the people on the force had on how to deal with these situations, I guess. But, you know, and I'm going to do whatever I want. So she, she goes on to say, I mean, this testimony, uh, Jalen goes on to say, crisis teams usually won't call police anymore for wellness checks, especially for me, because they know of my traumas with the police. That's quite a statement. Yeah. Yeah, so these are people with a lot of health conditions, a lot of potential symptoms, you know, and, um, you know, I, I think that's a really good statement that demonstrates there's a different kind of response that's needed. Yeah, and, and also, you know, for somebody who suffers this. Yeah. Being, when, when you know, Jalen says, crisis, crisis team usually won't call police anymore. For, and this is, this reminds me a lot of what Team Black was mentioning, right? Mm -hmm. With the community at this point in Eugene, Oregon, with Kahoot, that people know what they get when they call Kahoot. Right, that's true. Yeah, and 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 you know, if people don't want to escalate, uh, if they are having a manic episode or mm -hmm. they are in a you know in, in a in a bad state of mind, even people surrounding them may know. Okay, if we call the police, this is what's going to happen. Things are going to escalate. Things are going to get bad. But if we call the 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 Kahoot's team, this is what's going to happen. This is a, the most possible. Yeah. They, so. Well, they call the they call the routine. They call either nine one one, and ask for Kahoot's, or they call the root. Yep. You know, the routine police number, not not the emergency, and then it gets routed over to Kahoot's. And I've heard in some of the videos that we looked at that were you know sent to us uh, as commissioners many months ago looking at different programs, 
I remember that there were, were meetings of sort of program directors of a lot of these alternative programs around the country. And there was a story told on one of these about how people on the street in, in crisis, sometimes when they see the Cahoots uh, van come up, they say aloud, oh, thank God it's Cahoots. You know, because so there's this immediate expression of, you know, you can only assume it's safety. I'm going to be safe. I'm out of control here. I, I, I can't ground myself emotionally, but thank God it's not the other, you know, the other group coming. Yeah. And, and that also speaks to the, so the, so he talked, Tim Black talked about all the work that they have to do in the community to be able to show that they, they are there, they are part of it. Mm -hmm. They, you know, to, to build more or less uh, that, that reputation with highly trained people. Well, they, yeah, and they have to, I mean, the, the thing this is beyond the scope of what we need to do tonight, probably, yeah. but I'm thinking. Yeah, I, I, yeah, but, but we do mention Kahoot in, in yeah. the report, so I think this would be really good. A good one, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, All because right. at the end of the day, if, 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 if you run in this kind of situation, and at the end of the day, you, you are the person, it's going to, you know, things are going to go south, it's going to be charged with a solemn battery. Something that needed needed to be going that way, right? If somebody gets sort of respond like uh, physically responsive to the police because of the state of mind that they are, mm -hmm. and I think this is a good option that we, if there is different options besides the police, people will call them. Mm -hmm. Excellent. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Here's. Uh woman speaking on the need, the, the central idea here is that she's in favor of uh, funding for alternative mental health responses with mental health providers and perhaps peer, peer uh, advocates, the part of the team. Mm -hmm. But she also cautions that it's critical to maintain adequate funding for the police department to perform the roles that, they are, that they're best trained to do. And um, she specifically says that we need diversity on the police force and we need to attract more women and we need to attract people of color to strengthen community trust. Mm -hmm. And you've so, seen that around the country where there's yes. recruitment, recruitment of people of, of color to serve in, uh, in particular in, in communities of color. Uh, in our case, um, you know, I think what we're hearing among people who have uh, were labeled with different health and mental health conditions is you need to recruit people with lived experience of what we have because they'll understand when we're symptomatic that we're not necessarily dangerous. Yeah. You know, that we need we need some stabilization. And we need to be understood. So um Yeah. And yeah, the I, yeah, go ahead. So, uh while 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 you're talking i'm thinking about your saying and if if you go to which page is i think it's uh, i don't see the page number but it's uh point number six continue to provide police response and high priority about violent felonies against the person felony property crimes police disturbances uh serious crime uh, investigation of serious crime major automobile offenses report of illegal position of her i think that the, her comment would go well there because okay um how would you describe that because i can put it in right here i can put a note in right here i would say support for alternatives it's okay keeping keeping the mpd funded for the things that they have to do that yeah and I think that that's that's goes hand to hand with uh, so I think it's a pretty good list of uh, details. Um, mm -hmm. Adequate funding. Yep, I think that's that's important. Yeah, and yeah. All right, I'll get rid of the rest of this. This is a long quote. We'll have to maybe cut it down later. Let's see. At least we have sort of a starting point. Mm -hmm. 
here's the peacekeeper. It sounds like Dan, you already got this one. Um, yeah, I have I have that that Mark quote. Okay. Mark, so I'll just skip it. That that's about as far as I got. Now these were called out of the the third public hearing. Yes. Um, there are other documents. That yeah. So I'm gonna I can share. You want to share yeah. something? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Give me. All right. Me... So let me um, let get me out of the share. That. Right. Let's see. Yes. Um... Let me see. Oh, stop share. Here we go. <laughs> Give me one sec. I'm... Let, give me one second. I'm trying to. Ah, uh, here it is. Um... I'm trying to go to the drive because if if I try to open, it's gonna open a spreadsheet. Um, and I don't want a spreadsheet. I want the actual um, you want the actual testimony yeah yeah because the spreadsheet is it shows me like a tiny cell with a bunch of stuff okay oh because you organized it that way right uh i mean that's that's the way how it was uh sent yeah how the 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 system um let me see i'm trying to here uh i think i just uh dan yeah what's up when when i go still ask me for do you need it's, it keeps it keep telling me that i need access are you logged in with your yes i am with the police and review commission uh email so can you hit the request access i'll see what sure. email comes in you should you should have access and you were in there before. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, but I'm doing it now. It's is All right. Well, let's take a look. So you should have it. I don't know why you were listed there, but I just did a bad person again. So we'll see how it goes. Let me do it again. No, keep. Um, so why don't you log in as the NPRC testimonials account? Um, let me. Um, how, how do I do that? I mean, I don't have the. <clears throat> or hold on. Um, hold on, I'm taking, I'm being technology impaired here. So yeah, I cannot do it from here. Um, then would it be possible for you just to download it, the, the, the word documents and the PDF, there is, uh, several word documents in one PDF, right? Yep, I, I already sent those to you in an email too. You should have them. Let's see. Um, that was in when you said you couldn't get in before. Yeah, I mean, that was the email that you sent uh, five hours ago, right? If I go to the no. file, no? That one was um, sent two days ago, Saturday, March 13th at 8 a.m. It is. It's a file uploaded, right? File responses. Um, so if you, so the upload form oh, for the file. Yes. It, yep. 
<laughs> oh, God. You should be able to get in there, view the folder, do all that fun stuff. Yeah. So thanks, Noah. Uh, no, no, he's clapping. Okay. <laughs> um, let me open the document. We're going to go document by document, right? And after that, Carol, we can add it to your. Okay. So it's. Hold on. I need to wait for the document to be opened before sharing it. There. Excellent. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, in the the five uh, or the submissions, the text submissions were in in that email that I sent you to. So if you just want them, okay, like they're in there too. So this is um. <clears throat> So this is one of the one that we are, everybody, can you see it, Carol? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm going to just leave it open here for you to, for us to sort of read it. Read the comment. Okay. Yeah. Aloud or just silently? Uh, silently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and this is the one that we got by email, correct? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. The last paragraph is is your recommendation uh this one uh keep going to the next one yeah this one? yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's a good statement that paragraph right there i would say this one, right? From my perspective, much of the problem police departments are facing across the country, including Northampton, is that people don't know the police until they, uh, there's yeah. a problem of crime. Right. Cool. So I'm going to highlight this one, this section. We can keep reading. This is a really good also. Um, you know, even even though I, I noticed the, uh, the, the pairing of mental um, health professionals and police, even if I don't agree, um, I think this is, I mean, uh, this is one of the core of this testimony, right? I would think that those situations are when police and mental health crisis intervention professionals should work as a team to intervene. But that usually wasn't the case. I would do my intervention, and if things spiral out of control, then the police made their intervention, and the person was arrested. Could there have been some middle ground? And I think that's that's one of the things that we are sort of advocating to, mm -hmm. at the same time, right? Person needs a treatment, not a jail record. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> 
Well, whoever wrote this talks very, is very articulate about the dance, the dance between um, seeing a situation as somebody who's just emotionally dysregulated <clears throat> or a person who's potentially dangerous, you know, and it's, it's, it's a tricky call sometimes. And, and what's happened historically is that the police are, you know, often the first call because it's, there's, there's a fear that it's going to turn dangerous. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that's it. So are we, are we happy with those two sections, Kara? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And, and I, I think that um, I'm going to save this. So I have it and I can add it to your notes. Okay, and I, great. Yeah. And I think this is really important. Cool. So I'm going to stop sharing this one. I'm going to open the next one. Mm -hmm. Did you, when you looked at these, uh, did you see any of that were, were not related to mental health alternative, mental health alternative calls? Did you uh, see any housing yeah. or, or harm reduction or? Let me, hold on, let me, I, yes, I'm pretty sure there are. Let's, let's go for the next one. Um, I'm going to share it now. But this is the next one, Carol. Hmm. The third paragraph is interesting. The third one? Mm-hmm. Yep. I was <laughs> I was thinking the same. Yeah, I mean, look at this sentence. It is my belief that every action our city government makes, every expenditure we make, and every policy we establish must be viewed through the lens of how it will impact all of us. Yeah. For the police department in any department that is created to assume responsibilities that have been assigned to or have fallen under the purview of the police, the charge to ensure the safety of everyone with whom they come in contact must be the overriding principle and the focus of our procedures. Yeah. Should we highlight that one? What, the one you just highlighted? Uh, I, I haven't done it yet. Oh, <laughs> uh, Yeah. I mean, you have the third paragraph and the fourth paragraph, which are different things, right? Mm -hmm. the f in the fourth paragraph, this person talks about, well, when you ensure quality housing, education, healthcare, and uh, economic opportunity, you know, you, you, you're minimizing the need for police intervention. Well, you know, what happens is, you know, if there's adequate services, like in, in a, you know, some social democracies, um, the visibility of folks who are now getting caught in the, the net, the policing net, the visibility mm -hmm. is, it's not there. You know, visibility in the, I mean, we've talked a lot about vulnerability of people who yeah. have their experiences with police, but there's a visibility thing too. Yeah. Uh, when you're in distress and you don't have the resources to get yourself out of distress, you're, mm -hmm. you're much more visible and much more um, at risk of getting caught in the, in the net here. Oh yeah. Well, it's when, when we're talking that sometimes, you know, the, the uh, main thing we talk about uh, be, being in a, being economically disadvantaged, it's, it's, it's expensive at the end of the day. Yeah. Right. So what do you think about the last paragraph? easy to understand let's see
Where did it go? Can you see it? No, it disappeared. <laughs> it probably went, you, you touched it, it went down on the page or something. Yeah, I'm going to reset it again. Can you see it? Um, no, this is the paragraph that you initially, um, as a retired white male who's enjoyed privileges. Oh, yeah, yes. This is, you, uh, you highlighted that, and then there was another one down here, and I don't know where it went. Uh, yes. Oh, shush. <laughs> there you are. Okay, I'm yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. okay. Yeah. The greater challenge, the minimum quality of life for all. Okay, go ahead and highlight that too. Let's see. Yeah. You know, I can see that this testimony, this this statement, um, these paragraphs are good, would be good to be used at towards the end of the report because in a lot of ways, they're summer, summary comments that draw a lot of issues together. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Mm -hmm. Excellent, let's go to the next one. Uh, I don't know why my computer has been terrible. It's not working today, huh? Oh, no. Okay, let's, no, it, I don't know why. It's, um. you know, you know, um, I have not, in the testimonies I've looked at the last day or two, I have not, um, at least I haven't gotten to the ones that spoke to domestic violence, invo involvement of the police in domestic violence calls. And somehow I thought that there were a whole bunch of those in the, the final, the third, so if you the third look, pub the third public hearing, right? Yes. So if you take a look to to the to the spreadsheet, um, one of the main co one of the one of the, there were a couple of the comments, and we're gonna see those here. Okay. About, about sexual assault and 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 DB. Okay. You you can screen share that one. Uh. Okay. I was gonna let me see if this this one. Hold on. Let me look at look for the one that. Because we received, um, I don't know, somewhere between six, at least six and eight comments. Some were positive, favorable to the police, and some were not. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in the in the public comment, I one of the one of the p persons that has been coming to the commission meetings, um, Jane Doe submitted this one which is the one here i'm, tr I'm gonna try to uh, let's put in this hold on i don't know i don't want to make a mistake with this okay let me, I'm going to try to move this one to, to a, to a full document. So it's, it's easier. It's easier to, um, to read mm -hmm. because I have it because it's, um, yes, here it is. Okay. Excellent. I'm going to share it. Uh, Yes, that's, um, <clears throat> I think this is one, the second paragraph is one of the first testimonies that we received earlier yeah. in the process about um, when I reported my rape to the NPD, that the officer is calm, respectful, yep. trauma-informed, and victim-centered. I felt reassured and safe in his presence, on and on. 
Um, so that that paragraph is extremely important. So yeah, yeah. Um, but I, let's go, Carol. Let's go, and I, I would like for us to be able sort of to review the entire testimony. The entire, okay. Yeah, and after that we can move to to. You know, some of this testimony is, um, uh, go back, can you go back to the previous page? Look at the bottom of that page where, the, um, let's see. The Commonwealth was on the forefront, protecting victims and the officers of the NPD are skilled and trained to assist victims and enforce the law, including 209 violations, 209A violations, which are felonies. Absent from this section, there. This, these are all references to the uh, preliminary report. Absent from this set section are data regarding date rape on college campuses. Um, I'm thinking again. This may be beyond the scope of what we're doing tonight, but I'm I'm reminded of this um, uh, signatures uh, the the um, the letter to the commission that was received today. At least came in my inbox today, signed by a lot of Smith students who were um, basically saying, you know, we've got enough protection here on campus with campus police, keep the NPD please out of, <laughs> out of here. Yeah, um, and, and, and in some point, um, certainly we're gonna review a little bit emails, right? Mm -hmm. um, but but for now we're just centering- Oh, just doing the testimony, let's stay with testimony. the testimony. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, and and I, I do I do agree that uh, the testimony touch base in in some some issues that the the preliminary report may have had right. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas in this final report, which I haven't read the whole thing because I've just been working on on this these testimonies, mm -hmm. is there a section? Is I wonder is Dan still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. Dan, uh, right offhand, is there a, a section where we address how we're going to handle or um, rec recommend for further study the the role of policing in domestic um, violence and sexual assault uh, calls? Yeah, so that's in the next steps, uh, or no, no, sorry, that was still, it was still labeled a high priority. Um, but we list it as uh, high priority, but needs further study. Okay, yeah, I certainly agree with that. And um, I think what we ought to do here is just extract part of this testimony and send it um, off with a sort of in, encapsulated, or, I mean, embed, embed parts of the testimony in um, a statement that says that uh, basically, the jury is still out on um, mm -hmm. 
how deeply involved NPD ought to be? In what ways should they be involved on in domestic violence calls? Yeah, I, 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 I still would say, I mean, for, for at least for me, uh, this, sec this, this is specific. Okay. This, statement. Right, right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're going to find yeah. some, sort of a different opinion from other survivors, but I think right. it's, it's right. important. Right. Okay. Okay. We will highlight that. Is, that. Is, yeah, yeah. Is that okay with you, Carol? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's go to the to the next one. And yeah, if and if you remember, Alisa Klein and others also mm -hmm. said, survivors talk about this issue from a different point of view. Uh, hold on, let me see. Uh, okay, this is. I think this is the next one. Sorry, you can't have pizza. I'm not sure how we can use this. It's some powerful statements. Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, th th this the person... Yeah. This person talks about, you know, the complexity of the police budget of creating an alternative that makes sense for everyone involved overwhelm me. Sometimes I don't think I could speak before you without choking my words. So that this is the reason I should be in my I mean, in writing. So I, I, I don't know what I'm saying is that I, I appreciate mm -hmm. somebody mm -hmm. who, who knew that was going to get overwhelmed with this subject and because it's right. so massive. Right. Wrote this and and sort of understand how complex uh, having to deal with police budget, creating alternatives can be. So this could be highlighted as you know the community. Not not only the commission was aware of the sort of the difficult task, but also the community itself. I mean, if at any point we talk about the the sort of the community and the seeing what the commission is doing well you know what i i would what i'm drawn to is the paragraph before that uh -huh. where she says i mean and i don't know that we'd use the whole paragraph but it speaks you know she says in a variety of ways in that paragraph that the unnecessary use of force you know She's lying, she was, she was asleep and she was awakened in bed, surrounded by men in camouflage with automatic weapons yelling, police, police, we have a warrant. Um, that was a joint state SWAT team and Northampton raid. I mean, who knows what the context was? I mean, it sounds like. Yeah, that, that was. It might have been, I, I don't know. I'm kind of curious about the context. Are Were they doing, not that I'm justifying the way it happened, but. Was it a drug raid in her apartment or um, it's hard to know. I mean, it's, it's kind of like a powerful statement, but um, I've witnessed uh, police officers gently get help for people in mental health crisis. And I've witnessed an officer threaten to arrest a black man who was just sitting 
next to me drunk. So she, that sentence speaks to the variability of experience. Yeah. You know, where where sometimes there's differential um, force used. In this case, she uses it. Uh, she speaks to you know uh, a, a black man who is drunk. Um, so what do you think yeah. about using? Because uh, uh, for me, this the first section is a little confusing. Yeah, but the one that you just highlighted, I've been literally pushed around. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I um, think this is this is really clear because it shows that I have seen good and I've seen bad. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's there is mm -hmm. not just one single thing or the other. Right, right. The variability of the experience with the police officers. I mean, it's it would be unfair for us to to extrapolate from this that she's talking about race but i mean i know this woman and she is a white identified woman and she she talks about you know knowing about uh yeah it, it's i mean i i don't think we can go there actually it's it's just about the variability of experience mm -hmm. depending on what police do when they they answer the call okay. you know where they're they're too tough sometimes and they're gentle and helpful other times so okay it's only that the other, you know, I, uh, oh. Yeah, you were, you were, you were. Yeah. Yeah. Ability. I'm going to just leave this one here. Yeah. When I go back and I just put it all in one. Okay. Part. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, I mean, it's a no knock warrant and mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Next one. Let me see. Let me. I'm saving all the documents that we have. Oh, good. Started. That's great. So give me one sec. Should I send you that that document that I had? Yes, because Copy I'm gonna. Me. Yeah, because I'm gonna. Yes, because I'm gonna. Yeah, if you can send me that document, because I'm, I'm gonna start booming things around. Okay, great. Um, let's see next one. Give me one sec. Um... Okay. Next one. Uh, you have so many emails. Your Gmail or your? Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Oh, there's the there's the policing. I got it. Okay. It? Yeah. So it looks like this one, uh, the person sort of skipped the questions and went to the narrative, right? Here we go. I just wanted to send you email here. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move the document to where the narrative is start. Oh, there it is. Okay. <clears throat> Hmm. Oh, pretty, ooh, pretty heavy. Yep.
You can go ahead when you're ready. Yep. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. So th th this is this is a really good example when when um of of a you know of a family that looks different to what sort of implicit bias and it's gone yes. on for years. I mean, she doesn't give with each one of these incidents over a long period of time. She doesn't give the dates, but um, clearly the individual experience or the cumulative experience really says a lot about implicit bias in policing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd use one of them with, maybe we can't use all of them, but uh, use a couple of them that involve the, the children because, um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm having a hard time deciding which one. Yeah, really. The um... I think that yeah, you know, those last two, whether it's the middle school or the the son who had just started high school. Yeah. So I mean, these kids grew up here. They were. Yeah. I mean. This family's been here for what, 25 years, did she say? Um, yeah, yep. they've been here for 25 years. And so this young man entering the high school, I mean, he wasn't recognized as a community member. I mean, the, the police yeah. came out and to the house and, you know, put the hand on the gun. You know, I mean, he must only have been 50, 15, 16 years old, right? And coming out of his own house. Yeah. Backyard. So I'm going to I'm going to leave this too. Okay. All right. I and mean, I can check later and if if I can sort of make make a little smaller segment crunch, crunch it down a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Let's go to the next one. What time I'm going to do a time check. So we're good in time. 7:21. We're we're good. Yeah. And after Carol was uh, judgmental about my emails, pending emails. <laughs> about which ones? My, my the, the amount of emails that I have. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I feel, I feel bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Okay. Okay, when did this come in? Is there a date on it? Someone dismayed that we're moving too fast and against the best interest of the city. Yeah. Um, I think this is this all. This is after we invited uh, Chief Casper because there's also concern that Chief Chief Casper mm -hmm. okay. was not invited to participate more. Hmm. Well, you know, I mean, if I had to summarize this, this is a very invested member of the community. It says he was a special ed coordinator and landlord. So he's experienced home situations where I'd feel safer with a social worker and an officer uh, rather than, so he's talking about a covert responder model. Um, but there's also a criticism of us if we are going to be mean to um, individual police and not uh, appreciate their value. And, you know, I think this is, um, 
where we're going to get criticisms, I think a lot of it is going to be around this issue of thinking that the commission really has issue with, you know, the individuals rather than the, the practices of right. the, the culture and the practices of policing. Yeah. Well, Police, but, at, but, at yeah. The, but at the same time, that's complicated because how, yeah, at least in my case, I have to repeat that this is systemic. Yeah, right. This is, this is, but this then is. also the, the point is well, well made by, by some people who, who want to support the police, that there really are good and bad cops. And whoever comes out on that call is going to influence your, as a, as a civilian, is going to influence your impression uh, of policing based on the characteristics of that one police officer. And yet, I don't think we're looking at that so much as we're looking at this system of policing, yeah. how it how it plays out and whether there's value in it or where there's value in it and where there's not value in it and when, when, when it actually becomes dangerous. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, so in relation to this one, I mean, this person does, uh, talks about the, uh, hmm. that we need to start somewhere. We have to start somewhere, he says, and we could look at some alternatives like the community interventions with trained social workers presented as parallel systems. So, yeah, I mean, this is a complex response and, you know, thank you, Henry Brown, um, because he cautions, don't move too fast, don't do too much. On the other hand, he really speaks to the need for um, at least looking at alternative, um, you know, he doesn't say a different department, but he says yeah. parallel systems. So uh, you would feel comfortable with this section that I... Sure. It? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you're good at crunching it down. That's great. You know, I obsess too much. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm gonna just leave that one there. Let me see. Cool. Um, and I think we. Let me see. So th those were testimonies. Those were two, four, five. Then. Yeah, what's up? How many testimonies do uh, we have gone through five of the ones that got online? Online were around. How many Speak. testimonies were online? Um, I think there's five, five or six. Okay, um, okay, yeah, five. Sorry. sorry, I can confirm. There's five um, file submissions, and then there are five uh, form submissions. Okay. Like like the 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 the, uh, the in text. Okay. I have the uh, so the, the the problem to to be able to take a look to the submissions, uh, it's that it's how they are presented here. So let me I'm gonna let me I'm gonna show you Carol what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. It's a little more complicated to let's see what I've got here. So mm -hmm. this is how we see the form. Right. Oh yeah. Okay. So it's, uh, if you view it online, you can still see the you can see the form in context. Okay. Let me go back and cross my fingers that I'm gonna be able to get in. Uh, let's see. I'm going to, and, and that I do it that from the going to the drive. And to the NPRC yep. shared drives and then outreach and then the um, outreach project form. Uh, 
this one. Ah, perfect. I think I found it. Uh, we're gonna do in the ah, perfect. I think. Okay. I'm gonna turn this. I just realized also I reviewed a couple of other documents with testimonies and and did some highlighting and I probably should just send them to you, Javier. Okay. Let's let's take a look to this one. Okay. We can jump into your. Okay. Cool. Um. Yes. So this one is other that we got right. Um. Okay, so this is this is an interesting uh, situation, right? So this is more about sort of somebody would be like being able to have to feel safe after a snowstorm, uh, being able to go walk out, and this is this is a good example of things that I, I mean the police shouldn't be the ones called to this, right? Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's um, yeah, it's more like a public health thing. Yeah. Um, Yes, there's a city ordinance. There's no question about that. It says twenty within twenty four hours of a snowstorm, you've got to get have your pavement cleared. But um, yeah, I mean, I I don't see the usefulness of the police being called for that. Yeah. There, let's, uh, let's, yeah. Let's take a look to the next one. Mm -hmm. That, you know, that, that one is uh, where there was an assault mm -hmm. and the neighbor went with the uh, person. That, that seems like well within the purview of police policing. Yeah. Yeah. So this is interesting. So, mm -hmm. and I think this is a um, to a fair concern, right? <clears throat> so it says it 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 scares me to think that an elderly mm -hmm. parent could suffer a medical emergency and there would be no one to respond. Budget decisions should be made based on a thoughtful analysis of desired required services and monitor contract. And and I think it's sort of a mix of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Um. You want first responders to be able to be there and if, if it's an emergency. Many times it's uh, the firefighter, the ones arriving there. And the, the fire ambulance, yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah, I mean, excellent. What, what do you think about this one, Carol? What would make you feel safe? Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think what would... <laughs> If this uh, writer, this um, person who submitted a uh, response to the qu our questions um, knew another, an alternative, uh, like a 211, 411 mm -hmm. call to someone who could respond to a, essentially a uh, health emergency. Yep. I'm sure they would have called that other number. But because all of these seem to root through the police number, people's impression is that that's the way it should stay because they were comforted by that availability. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in this case, it's a sort of medical, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, definitely medical. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to the next I'm, I'm kind of surprised that the dispatch didn't uh, send, I mean, who knows? We don't know the context, but you know, that's, that's a dispatch that mm -hmm. could have been sent to the fire to send out the ambulance, the fire ambulance and to, for, for transport. Yeah. And, and, and also if it's a medical situation, I mean, you never know. You want an EMT on it, basically. Yeah. 
That's number two. Number three. So this person is concerned that hours uh, coverage, police coverage would be cut mm -hmm. and, you know, fears that it would be a nine to five job uh, instead of around the clock shift work. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, clearly people are worried by what they think we're going to come up with here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But at the same time, I mean, it's, it's, I have to say it's un, in, in it's this specific case is unfunded. I mean, nothing. There is nothing of what we are recommending that would do that. That hours be cut, yeah, or, or staffing be cut, yeah. Yeah, I mean, being taking a look to the to the report how it is, mm -hmm. there is nothing that would provoke that. Mm -hmm. I mean, just just to be clear, mm -hmm. is then is that a is that a uh, uh, the right assumption, the right statement that I'm doing? I mean, we do technically say they should establish caps for overtime and detail pay, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't say what they are. And we reference like the people that are working over a hundred hours where it's like clearly not safe. Yeah. Um, but most of that really it's about detail. That's, that's where that's happening. And uh, it's, not, it's not the standard shift. It's not, right. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're not saying police hours should be cut or anything mm -hmm. like that. And, and mm -hmm. that detail work would go to other municipal workers trained to be able to do that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. right now there's even, I mean, what the, the NPD does now is they, they send out to other, other police agencies, but the idea would be just have it be fulfilled by Northampton employees um, or civilian flaggers. Mm -hmm. Cool. Let's go to the next one. This is really short. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it's hard to see. You you see the gratitude, but you don't see much of a um, context for it. That they're polite and helpful. Let's go to the next one. Mm. Oh, that looks blank, huh? Yes. Next one. This one was the one that uh, that we read. Let me see here. Jane Doe? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this one was the one that I, I moved to a full document, mm -hmm. so it was easier to mm -hmm. read because mm -hmm. the, the spreadsheet was being a pain. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, one of the interesting things about this testimony, this uh, narrative, is that the writer does bring in uh, some structural protections that are in place, law and so forth, that are really beyond um, Northampton that are um, applied by Northampton to police when they're responding to domestic violence situations. Mm -hmm. um, the abuse prevention order, let's see. Yeah, here. yeah and um, she makes other references. Um, it really is um, a request or a strong recommendation for keeping NPD funding at its current level or at, so that the department can be returned to full capacity. I think that yeah. the, the most important part of this testimony be, is the part that relates to um, policing involved in domestic violence calls, where somebody has been stalking you know on this isn't just a one-time event this is not a one-time sexual assault this is 
ongoing, you know, terrorism type of situation. Yeah. And, and, viol and violations of restraining orders. I think violations of restraining orders, you don't give over to a cahoots type of response. No. Yeah. I mean, you involve the court, you involve um, advocates for this victim. Um, and and uh, the police clearly, I mean, the, the, the writer makes, I think, a credible case that police ought to be in there either as first responders or very present as second responders, you know. Okay. So that's, that's um, you know, we may want to use part of that, what you've highlighted for, um, or one of these paragraphs, um, in this section that Dan was saying is written about further study. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think it's important to, one of the reasons why I, I, I sort of got my attention, this specific paragraph, it's for something that you just said. Mm -hmm. um, talks about the incident, talks mm -hmm. about the, uh, the answer, but talks also about the answer uh, over time. Right. Right. Because it, you know, it's something that can escalate. It's something that is, it's, it's as, as traumatic as it's be. Right. It, it may not stop. It may. Well, yeah. Stay, here's, right? here's somebody, she talks about someone who is clearly not staying within the law and the orders, the stay away orders. You know, there's been violations of that. So yeah. again, you probably don't need a social worker or a peer to go out and try to enforce that. Yeah. I mean, um, so. Yeah, and Carol, isn't that the police department has a specific officer's training to-, to... They do, they do. And yeah. they have a specific protocol too. That's yeah. always two officers. It's often a, a female and a male officer who go out and they have their own roles in investigating and, you know, enacting a plan, a safety plan. Yeah. So- And uh, maybe, and arrest, you know, and, and arresting if they need to. So are you okay with using us using uh, that specific section? Mm -hmm. Let me look at it again. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good paragraph. Let's use that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it encapsulates mm -hmm. certainly the essence of the of the testimony. Mm -hmm. And and I one of the things that I I, I see really useful is talks about. This can be this this action uh, being the victim of this can just go through time, and there is also things that happen after that would require, as you said, as you said, Carol, uh, sort of in this case, police a violation or a restraining order, mm -hmm. the constant uh, harassment, right? Right. Okay. Um, I think those are those are. Let me see. Hold on. Yeah, those are all the the testimonies. Um. You said you had more, Carol. I do. Now I'll have to send these. Well, actually, I guess I can still if, screen share. Let me you, show them to you yeah. and then I can send them to you. Yeah, yeah. Just let's just screen share it, highlight it. And after that, send it to me and I'm going to put everything in a beautiful Word document for Dan. <laughs> Sorry, Great. Dan. Sorry, Daniel. One more document to keep track of. I was, I was going to say that. All right. So what, what do we one have One more here? beautiful Word document. No, that's not it. All right, let's see. I mean, we certainly we have testimonies from, hold on. Um, let me see what I'm looking at here. Uh, testimonies from Alyssa Klein, who's also a survivor. Um, Daniela Madeo, who's also a survivor. Um, if, if those are the ones that you were talking before, um, oh, no, Carol. No, no. Uh -huh. The reality is that we also have a lot of testimonies of other people that spoke almost in every single one on support of sort of defunding the police and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So we obviously we're not going to put that every single one, but. Um, um, this is something, this was your title, summarizing testimonials. Let's see. Oh, this. Um, there were a couple of comments in here that talked about what it should look like. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is this is this this is the document. So Sean Donovan came to this subcommittee and was part sort of the drafting of the making comments about the document that we were going to use. 
and he also created his own uh, the white flower alliance also created mm -hmm. they created their mm -hmm. own outreach document and this is the result of their document. right right and i was talking to six six out of seven folks he spoke with responded to the 10th question in our survey about other options teams that emerge are wanting more voluntary, unarmed and peer-to-peer -peer crisis alternatives and also places beyond the initial point of contact. Yeah, so after the acute incident, yep. initial, oh, and that, this speaks to the role of a, a department that's going to coordinate this yep. based on um, the flow of needs of people who um, are responded to, because there's always follow-up. I mean, there should be follow-up and there isn't always. To find voluntary and relevant support wherever, it, if there isn't peer support available. One respondent said provide a less threatening environment instead of the psych ward and a place that feels, again, this speaks to people with mental health issues. See if there's anything else I... Um, oh, this was that terrible anecdote we heard that they they track him. about uh this is on market street yep. a homeless man just sitting there visibly drunk and he just got dragged around uh down the street and and there was actually um harm done to him by the time the emts got there yeah and i think the emts should have been called first instead of it sounds like the dispatch went to the police and then it may be that the police called for paramedics. Yes. Yeah. Is there any more? Maybe I didn't get any farther on this this one. Um let me see. I think those two those two are testimonies. I mean those two highlighted parts that you were doing there, I think are, are perfect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we also have, so one part of the material that I send you, uh, Dan and Carol was uh, the testimonies that people were giving during this, this the, the budget meetings last June, mm -hmm. last, mm -hmm. uh, last year. I didn't even get to those. I, I have those in my computer, but. Um, uh, Dan, if you're there, um, how important is it to go through everything going back to the summer? Um, I mean, I, I think the, the key is that we have a smattering of, of these that are strategic and that the sort of make, you know, that was the sort of the, the, the confusion that people had was there's no, there are no problems in Northampton. Uh, or there's no like that 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 it's all about the national issues and and you know we know it's not and right so right the... okay so so a, a a comment like this this is January 2018 so not terribly long ago this is a horrible story yeah. about mistreatment of somebody who was vulnerable by his drunkenness and you know I don't know what the police were intending to do to pee. it sounded like they didn't PC him they didn't take him in because he was at risk of harm to himself from being so drunk they ultimately ultimately there was an ambulance there was a medical you know i mean somebody was afraid he was going to become toxic because that's why they got the emt out there in the ambulance so you know it's not clear to me just from this statement why the dispatch went the way it did you know, and having police as first responders and dragging him along, and he probably wasn't very cooperative or he was passed out. And um, the police arrived and they began to drag him down the street with his bare back on the ground, his shirt and jack jacket being lifted up to expose his skin on to the raw ice and cement. So it's it's cold weather too. Yeah, and I mean, my guess is, I mean, without knowing anything it, about the specifics, my guess is because dispatch will send medical personnel but they'll also you know they'll also put the call out to police 
Okay. Um, because and so the police got there first. Is yeah. what what happened? I see. Got right, it. and that's and that's usually the case because the police. I mean, in this case, right? Like, um, Market Street's really close. Um, mm -hmm. Sure. The ambulance has to get the call and and then leave from the fire department because we don't have patrolling ambulances. We only have right. That's police. true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, so police routinely end up right. on the scene. Even They're going to be the first responders. Be, yeah, because even of, if they, yeah, yeah, even if they weren't the people that were requested are really the people that mm -hmm. were, that are like best suited for it mm -hmm. um, in that moment, they'll still be there. And that's, that, that makes okay. sense. Yeah. But, you so, know, they, they, they do have discretion to not, you know, drag, some, as this person's describing, you know, dragging somebody down the street, they have discretion not to do that, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, we have 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have noted and I have everything to start sort of moving things around to be able to send to Dan. Uh, Carol, would it possible for you to take a look to the last two testimonies of the, um, of the, the third, um, from the last public hearing? Sure. And just send it like in, after this meeting, if you can take a look quickly and send me um, something similar to what you did with the others and then send me all the, that batch. I th I, th I think that's what I sent though. But, um, did let you get it email I... in the uh, in the policing review uh, um, email? No, I haven't gotten anything yet from you. That's weird. Transmission is slow, huh? Yes. Let me make sure it went out. Yeah. You know, sometimes I have that problem with Outlook. Yes. I, I hate Outlook. Oh, yeah. Well, with, this is Outlook. That's how it was sent. Let's see. Yeah. Mm, sent items. Oh, goodness. Hasn't gone out. Okay. So okay. If... Oh, you know, they're all... Um, oh, there's 34 drafts that never went out. Oh, that's terrible. It's all to the, that is terrible. All right, here's the one that I sent you and okay. I will send it again. Perfect. <laughs> I, will, I will let you know if I don't get it, okay? In the next okay. Uh, in the next hour, I will send you sort of an email. Well, mm -hmm. you're getting emails, but the emails are not going out, right? So yes. I will, if I don't get it in the next hour, I will um, I will email you, okay? Mm, okay perfect uh so then we're gonna i'm gonna as soon as i get i'm gonna start with the things that i have here and i'm gonna add everything what carol is gonna send me within the next hour okay and i will send that to you noah and cynthia is that okay yep perfect thank you excellent uh is there anything else that we need to discuss now Okay. I can't think of anything. <laughs> Carol? <laughs> no, I can't think of anything. I think what I'm going to do, since I was just horrified by noticing 35 emails that I thought went to other commissioners that are sitting as drafts, they were they never went out. And I'm sure that was not because I didn't push send. So, Carol, re re I'm going to send them by way of G my Gmail account. Okay. Review in, in your Outlook many times the main cause of not having outgoing email is because your storage it's over capacity oh okay i should delete a lot of things yeah so if you okay. check your storage capacity is it if okay it's close to the limit or over limit it's not going to let you and doesn't let you know that it's oh limited. yeah see that's the problem whereas google google would probably let you know yeah yeah so cool if i don't if i don't if I don't hear from you, Carol, the next hour, I will shoot you an email. <laughs> I still love you. It doesn't mean anything personal. Yeah. It's not, it's not yeah. personal. Okay. Right. Cool. Um, excellent. Noah. Uh, so I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn. Awesome. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Yes, I second that. What? Okay. Carol seconded it. Did it, did it. <laughs> and all right. Javier. Yes. Dan. Yes. Carol. Yes. Exactly. All right. We thank, thank you so much. Javier, thank you for, and Dan, thank you for all your work. Y'all get on it tonight. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, thank both. you so much, everybody. 
Uh, Noah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> Noah. I don't want to leave you out of here. My goodness, you more than anything, you you're gonna get on a plane and fly somewhere after this is over. <laughs> I'm gonna sleep for like two weeks. <laughs> I think that sounds good. That Excellent. sounds good. Oh, okay, guys. Thank you all. Thank all you so right. Much. See you tomorrow night. Bye. Yeah. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.